today we've come to the Vale of Glamorgan, which, oh there it is, look! Oh yeah! <laughs> today we've come to the Vale of Glamorgan, which is not very far from Cardiff, it's about 20 minutes in the car, um, and we've come to see something that we're both quite shocked we didn't know about before because actually it's really cool. Yeah, it's um, I couldn't to be honest. When I first heard about it, I couldn't quite believe that something that old existed, like not far from us as well. Like you hear about the ones. There's one called Pentre Ivan in um, in Pembrokeshire, and like that makes more sense in a weird way because it's like so rural. But yeah, it's it's weird to think that there's one of these things like only 20 minutes outside where we live. So Shamburg Glavi Tinkinswood, which is what it's known as in Welsh, um, in English it's Tinkinswood Burial Chamber. Yeah. It actually has quite a few different names, which Greg found out for me. <laughs> I'm going to have to refer to the paper because there's six. Five, there's five. One of them is Castell Carreg, which means stone castle. Castell Carregan, Llech a Villast, Llech a Villast, Maes a Villast and Gwal a Villast. So as you can tell, um, I don't know what that means, what that I can tell. And what's really interesting about Tinkinswood as well is that there was a village here at the time when the burial chamber was built. So it can't really be known for certain exactly how these societies used to live because it was so long ago and they can only figure it out from things like the architecture and the tools and things like that. But what they definitely do know for sure, thanks to these burial chambers, is that they used to like bury their dead in a, quite like a ceremonial and spiritual way even that far long ago. So I'm just having a look at the chamber now um, and it's really cool. It's sort of hard to believe that something that old is still stood here, um, quite undisturbed. Um, a part of why that is is probably to do with the fact that this top stone um, weighs 50 tonnes. They think that it would have taken 200 people to lift it or to put it into place. But it's really sort of hard to imagine that because it's just so massive. I don't know if you can make out how big it is, but it's just, it's huge. The quarry nearby that they thought initially the rock had come from, but when they did some tests, they found out that the rock wasn't actually from there. So it's really hard to know sort of where it came from. Obviously, well, you'd have thought it, it can't be transported very well because it's so huge. So maybe it was a rock that was sort of already here, but yeah, they, they don't know. But as you can see from this sign, it was excavated in, 1914 I don't know how well you can make that out but it says 1914 and when they excavated it they found the bones of um, over 50 people so it was men women and children and what they found as well was that there was some bones missing which sort of suggests that they were taken out of there again after they'd been put in probably for some sort of rituals. But the tomb was actually, the tomb, the chamber was actually used not only by Neolithic people, but also from people into the Bronze Age. So it was used over, you know, years and years and years. So obviously whilst researching, I saw loads of pictures of it, but it's just defies all expectations, really. It's just massive. Um, another thing is that it was built so that uh, the sun would bathe it in the morning when it comes up, so it's facing the east. Um, so I, I thought that it would be sort of this bit because it's open, but actually I checked on my phone and east is that way, so it would have been coming in, I assume, through that little hole there in the back. I don't know how well you can see it. I'll, I'll go around and have a look at it. But yeah, it's just wild really that this sort of thing was built so, so long ago. So the little hole is sort of behind behind this little thing there, see, it's by there. Um, and there's a little hole there as well. So that's where the sun would have flooded in and uh, and lit up the tomb. What do you think these are then? Have you have you investigated these little things? Yeah, it's what I said to you, the goddess of fertility. Ah, yeah. That's cool. Scratch marks. But there. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm in the chamber. Um, I can nearly draw it. So I'm six foot four, six foot three and a half, but we'll round it up. I'm extremely tall, and <laughs> at this end of the chamber, I can uh, I can fit myself in, stood up. But it goes like further down. The so longer you um, like down to this end, then it's a lot. Oh, 
it's a lot less high. And then you've got the wall. It's really weird to think that this rock above me is literally, how, how old? 6,000 years old and weighs 40 tons. It's like, it's so weird to think that that long ago, not only did people use this for like really special, like ceremonial purposes, but also they use this kind of area for like communal areas as well. Obviously not inside the chamber, but in the surrounding area, they used it for like, I don't know, special ceremonies. Like it would have been like May Day and things like that. And they would have used it for kind of social occasions and just as an area to meet up and things. A thousand years older than Stonehenge. And that obviously it's nowhere near as big as Stonehenge, but that is like, an absolute marvel, isn't it? How they managed to get those massive rocks on top of those other massive rocks. But this is probably, it's, it's just as incredible when you consider it was a thousand years before. This rock is still 40 tons, it's still bloody heavy. And it was also a thousand years before the, the pyramids. That's how old this is, um, which is pretty cool because you think of the pyramids as one of the oldest man-made things on earth. And this is a thousand years older. And it's kind of weird, I suppose, as well, that when you think all those people right through from the Stone Age, Bronze Age, all the way through to now, people still kind of consider it a place of significance, like up here now, and Manon obviously showed you earlier the little, um, those things. And then you see another little bit, like flowers there. Someone's left, and then in here is quite sad. It's a little, someone's put some flowers in here and they've just been mushed up in the mud. Thank you for watching um, Diach and Willia. Thanks for joining us at Tinkinswood Burial Chamber. <laughs> Very exciting. We're now gonna have some dinner because once again, we've badly time managed, <laughs> badly organized and we're both hungry and probably gonna have an argument soon. <laughs> so, so we're gonna go get some dinner. Desperate. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Ta -da.